Students, most welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Krishnan Dure, teaching in the Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. Today, we are concentrating on the sources of economic history of early India. In this connection, we shall concentrate on three major points. Number one, what sources are? What are the categories of sources? And thirdly, how these sources are helpful for understanding the economic history of early India. Let us see the objectives of this module. It aims to study the various source materials and their importance in the study of economic history of India up to 1200 CE. Now, introduction. History informs that human beings have taken part in different activities in order to living in the world from as early as the Stone Age. They have changed their surroundings, conditions and things so as to secure their physical existence on the earth. In doing so, they have acquired various experiences. These are preserved in several forms of things or traces. We have archaeological artifacts, wise northern black polished ware, red and black ware, etc. and many others. They have written their experiences according to the needs of their learning. So students, the written materials together with archaeological artifacts constitute sources. These provide information about the living, thinking, expressing thoughts, ideas, fighting, passing social as well as family life, providing food, worshipping deities. Sources wise, the Vedas, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, the Dharma Shastras, the Orthoshastra of Kautilya, ancient monuments, inscriptions and coins show working relations among them human beings. Accordingly, they have carried on their activities in society. They have brought about changes in society so as to suit their purposes of living through ages. The historian delves into historical phenomena by understanding those changes through times. Now by this time, students, we have learned that human beings, in order to live their lives, have acquired various experiences and according to the needs of their living, they have written only those things which they have felt necessary to preserve and the media that they had used for writing were stones, other objects, manuscripts in which they had preserved their experiences. And the historian read, reads these sources and try to extract how those people had passed their lives. So, naturally there are many sources. Let us come to know about the categories of sources. As I told you earlier, the second major point. Let us see. Categories of sources. We have two categories of sources, literary and archaeological ones. Literary sources, two categories again. Indigenous sources, non-indigenous sources. The indigenous literary sources include Vedic literature, Jaina and Buddhist texts, the Jatakas, epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata, secular literature, Dharma Shastras, Monusmriti, Jagabalka Smriti, etc. Orthoshastra of Kautilya, Puranas, Classical Sanskrit Literature, Creative Literature by Dashakumara Charita, Kiridarjaniyam, Mitchakotika. Now, the second category, non-indigenous sources. These include the travels of Pazian, Zuanzang of Siyuki, Megasthenish Indica, Diodorus Bibliothecus Historicus, Strabo's Geographicon, the Periplus Mari Erythrae, Pliny's Naturalis Historia, Claudius Ptolemy's Geographicae Hupigesis, etc. Non-indigenous sources also include 
the Arabic and Persian sources like Hudud al Alam, Al Biruni's Kitab ul Hind, letters of medieval Jewish traders by S. D. Goitain, etc. Now, by this time, students, we have learned that how so many categories of sources, literary sources, indigenous as well as non indigenous. Let us so see another category of sources, archaeological sources. What are these? Archaeological sources. Archaeological sources include inscriptions, coins, artifacts from exploration and excavation, art and architecture. These sources provide information about understanding the economic life of the early Indians from as early as the Prehorpan days. It should be studied through the following chronological stages. Students, in this connection, we should take note of the fact that the sources, both indigenous, including non-indigenous, as well as archaeological, including inscriptions, coins, etc. All these sources are equally important for understanding the economic activities of the early Indians. So, for understanding this clearly, let us go by chronological stages so that we can have a comprehensive idea about how the early Indians had passed their economic lives. Let us see the chronological stages. Sources up to 200 BCE. Sources 200 BCE to 300 CE. Sources 300 CE to 600 CE. Sources 600 CE to 1200 CE. Now let us go to sources up to 200 CE. How these are important? As I told you, the last major point or the third major point is how these sources are helping us to know the economic history of early India. Let us see chronological stages. First, excavations at Bagor, Mohagara, Koldihawa, etc. bring to light the hunter and food gatherer people. They entered the agricultural life. The Mehergar excavations show matured material culture of the people. The people used precious stones, wise, tarpus, bead, conch shells, lapis lazuli. The matured material culture indicative of the notions of the urban economy. The scholarly studies show the developed Indus Valley civilization dated to about 2350 to 1750 BCE. This civilization spread over a large area bounded by Shutkajendur on the west, Daimabad on the south, Alamgirpur on the east and Shautugai on the north. The Harappans developed artisanal industry, urbanization, bead making, great bath, granary, wide roads, well distributed trains, train, trade linkages with the Deccan, Saurashtra, Western India, Afghanistan, Central and West Asia. The people of the Harappan culture maintained overlaid communication. They used wheeled carts. They used watercrafts. The people of the Rigvedic days were familiar with Briksha Chedaka, Rathokaro, Charmamna, Vashas, Adhivasa, Karnashabhano, Hiranyakarno, Khadi, Karmaro, Govishti, Brihi, Java, etc. The people of the Rigveda were mainly pastoral. They were becoming aware of the importance of agriculture. The later Vedic texts show that the people knew the words like Godhumo, Kinaso, Sita, the use of iron, nibi, also artisanal words like Kaulalo, 
मणिकार इशुकार धीवर सुरकार एटसेट्रा पीपल ऑल्सो डेवलप्ड ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स पीपल न्यू द वर्ल्ड्स बनीज समुद्र पीपल मेन्टेन्ड कनेक्शन कम्युनिकेशन पीपल प्रेड फॉर सेफ जार्नी टू फार ऑफ प्लेसेस बुद्धिस टेक्स्ट रेफर टू कसी दैट इज कृषि द फार्मर मेड द कल्टिवेबल लैंड सुकट्ठम सुकृष्टम दैट इज सुइटेबली कल्टिवेटेड एंड सुमत्तिकम दैट इज सुमृत्तिका दैट इज दे प्रिपेयर द सॉइल फॉर कल्टिवेटिंग द क्रॉप दे वॉन्टेड टू कल्टिवेट द जैन एंड बुद्धिस लिटरेचर वेर एगेंस्ट द स्लॉटर ऑफ एनिमल्स बिकॉज द कैटल वेर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर बाय नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव बीन क्लियर अबाउट हाउ आवर एंसेस्टर्स हैड पास देयर हैड परफॉर्म देयर इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज रेंजिंग फ्रॉम एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोडक्शन टू इंडस्ट्रियल production even they also developed certain artisanal skills also in order to cater to the services of the people in different ways in different sectors let us see another part in buddhist texts kasi gorakshaka goraksha that is cattle keeping were important livelihoods people resorted to artisanal industries from 600 bce onwards the people had also taken to sea trade the words samudra vanijya samudikayo navo sea going vessel are known the people were known to the city the arthashastra provides information about the economic activities of the people the state had control over mining shipping textiles and wine industries private entrepreneurs were also encouraged humans maintained communication with others the people resorted to the riverways and land routes for communication between pratishthanapur and sabasti the road also included mahishmati ujjaini vidisha banasabhaya the port of bharugachcho kausambi tamralipti patliputra patalo etc and also went as far as pushkalavati bharugachcho was connected by road with pushkalavati megasthenish and ashokas lagman edicts refer to a royal road royal highway karopathi so students by this time we have learned that the early indians had not only developed agricultural practices production but also developed also produced surplus through their different forms of production including industrial ones at the same time we have also learned they resorted to trading activities particularly sea trade remember one thing when we get some references from literary sources or inscriptional sources it means these when these were recorded this shows that these activities must have been done must have been performed in reality and that's why those activities according to their necessities or needs were coined or recorded in the concerned source or sources let us see as i told you chronologically next stage sources 200 bce to 300 ce what we get during this phase from the sources remember again both literary as well as archaeological sources are important 
for this case also, this phase also. Let us see. Both indigenous sources like Jatakas, etc. and non-indigenous sources like Megasthenes Indica contain information about the economic developments. Pliny, the Mahabharata, Melindapangha and the Jaina text Uttaradhanya Sutra refer to crops, wise, jawar, bajra, kolai, mustard seeds, etc. Dharma Shastra texts refer to the importance of irrigation project. Both epigraphic and archaeological artifacts refer to the use of well, pond and canal for irrigation, for example, Sudarshan Lake. The Stringo Beropur excavations, it is in Allahabad, refer to the preservation of river water for irrigation. The Buddhist texts Mahavastu Abodano and Milindapangho mention the artisanal activities. Donative inscriptions from Shachi, Bharhut, Karla, Bhaja, Pitalkhora, Amravati, etc. support this. The Periplus Mari Erythrai refers to the textiles industries at Tagar and Pratishthanapur. Ptolemy's geography mentions a diamond mine at Kosha on the east of the Narmada River. Artisanal industries were organized. Professional organizations were Sreni, Gono, Pugo, Shangha. The traders were called Shartabaho, Sreshti, etc. The Periplus and Ptolemy referred to flourishing ports wise Barbaricum, Barugaza, Mojiris, Kolchi, Masalia, and Ganges, etc. Both the literary and archaeological sources report Indo Roman trade. In this regard, coins also help us a lot. The Kushanos, Shakaku, Khatrapas, Shatabahanas issued gold coins, gold, silver, and copper coins. The Nagas, Mitras, Malabas also issued coins. Students, in this connection, we should keep in mind that the people of early India developed their trading activities. And in that connection, they also used coins. And in respect of coins, we should take note of the fact that coins are so important, it requires further detailed study. But in this case, we should keep in mind two major points. Number one, coins study has two major parts. First of all, how it is made, what is its shape, how thickness it is, how thick it is, etc. etc. And what is the weight of this coin? All these are called together constitute the metrology of coins. Another part is which is very very historical is how coins are used and what is the what is or are the purpose or purposes for which a coin or coins are being used and who are or where the authorities to issue coins whatever the coins gold silver or copper who enjoyed the authority to use or issue the coins let us go to another part. Excavations at Taxila, Mothura, Chandraketugar, Nivasa, and Satanikota, Nagarjini Konda provide welcome light to the on the process of urbanization in early India during this phase. The people also maintained overland connection with distant places. Recent archaeological evidences like inscriptions, rock art from Karakoram Highway, sites like Hunja, Gilgate now inform of the existence of a highway that connected Bactria, Kabul, Pushkalabhoti and Taxila. Students, in this connection, we should keep in mind that coins as well as the other sources from which we can get the required information about the economic activities of early Indians are not only particular coins or particular literary or indigenous sources or non-indigenous sources, but also the artifacts as well as the road 
that the people had used in their economic transactions. This road is also important for consideration or considering for understanding this economic history of early India. And that's why we have mentioned the source road that they maintained for connection. Let us see another stage. Sources 300 CE to 600 CE. In this case, we learn that Harshacharita refers to paddy, wheat, sugarcane products produced at Sthanishar. Raghubamsha mentions the land of Pundra with good production of sugarcane. Amarakosha refers to types of land that is Urbara, Aprahata, etc. Gupta inscriptions from early Bengal refer to Bapokhetra, Aprahata, Khilokhetra, etc. Different and land measurements like Dronobapo, Kullobapo, etc. from the Gupta epigraphs. Bakatoga inscriptions very useful for understanding agricultural conditions of the Deccan during the period. These land grant records were called Agroharo. The artisans like Kongshokaro, organizations like Nigomo from both epigraphic as well as literary compositions like Amurakosho known. Narada Smriti, Brihaspati Smriti contain information about the professional organizations of the period. Students, in this connection, we should take note of the term Agroharo. It is very, very important term and it is very, very figuring in, in the context of early Indian economic history right from 300 CE. Maybe in the days prior to, but we find records from 300 CE. Agroharo. It is simply rent-free land grant to or a part of the village or a piece of land being granted to some authority, usually Brahman. But we have evidences that it was also given to Vaishya. But those examples are very few. Mainly or usually we get references to Agroharas to Brahmanas. So that's why we also include this particular uh, term for understanding Indian, early Indian economic history because it is also very, very important. So important that not Southern India, Brahmadeo Agraharo, in North India also we get reference to Brahmadeo Agraharo, Kulo Agraharo, like this. So important. Let us see other part. Gold, silver and copper coins helpful for understanding economic activities of the early Indians of this phase. Epigraphic records contain references to taxes. Koro, Upuri Koro, Haliko Koro, Bhago, Hiranno and Udrongo and also the concerned officers like Udrongiko, those who were associated with the collection of these taxes were called revenue collectors or officers, Odrangiko, those who collected Udrango, like that. Mahabharata mentions a road that connected Mathura, Malwa, Mandhata, Poitan. As I told you earlier, the roads are also important. In this connection, we are also seeing that a road was used by the people in order to carry on their economic transactions between different places. Let us see. Sources from 600 CE to 1200 CE. What we get from these sources? Several copper plate inscriptions helpful for understanding the economic history of this phase. Inscriptions refer to crops, gubako, narikela, etc. Inscriptions also mention the use of a large plow in cultivation. The husking pedal used known from the Shadukti Karnamrita, Rajatarangini, Shubhashita Ratnakosha, Kuttani Matam, etc. The Krishi Parashara is an important text on agriculture. 
literary and inscriptional references to Orovatto used for irrigation. Market centers like Oddo, Sate, Penta in the Deccan, Hotto or Hottika, Mondopika in Northern India, Nagaram in South India. Students, in this connection, we should take note of the word Orovatto. It is still in use in our days also, particularly in Rajasthan area. In I have seen also in other uh, uh, UP and Bihar areas. It is a weight lifting a bucket which is used through wheel to lift water from your well to irrigate the field. So it was also used by the early Indians in this phase to which we get references from different sources. Let us see other part. Arabic sources, all Masudi, all Idrisi, etc. inform overseas trade both in the west and east of India. Coins, kauris, churni, metal dust used in trade and commerce. So in this connection, we should take note of the fact that not only coins our early Indians used, but also they used kauris. Still, these are in use. Not in economic transactions, but in on auspicious occasions, but still is in use. Kauris and chunni metal dust. Certainly, they were these coins, this also a form of coin used in order to carry on small scale economic transactions, as in our days also we use small scale currency, one rupee or five rupees, etc, etc. They also used in their form, as we also use in our days. Let us see. Inscriptions and archaeological records refer to urban centers, Tattanandapuro, Siadoni, etc. And we, we get references to other urban centers also. Epigraphic literary sources including Arabic and Persian sources refer to categories of merchants, Manjara, Vaidehoko, Sarthabaho, Sreshthin, Baddhavabohari and Novitthako. Students, in this connection, we should take note of the fact that in our days, we have different categories of merchants. A peddler also a merchant, trader, who is trading. For example, on some toffees or chocolates, he is also purchases and sells. If purchase and sell is the prime cat notion of a trader, then he is also a trader. From this two most important trader or business tycoon or business magnate, he is also conducting a business network, not directing purchasing or selling goods like this, but he is also carrying on business network. So he is also a businessman. So between this man, this business tycoon and this peddler, we have a number of merchants. So in our days, as in our days, we see different categories of merchants. In their days also, they developed different categories of merchants. They categorized merchants in different categories. And that's why we get references to different categories of merchants in sources. Let us see another part, art and architecture. In this connection, we should take note of the fact that human beings always live in two stages. Number one, in the physical stage, when, where they require food, shelter and clothing, and at the mental level, they also live where they practice songs, painting, drawing, gossiping, reading texts or 
स्टोरी बुक्स एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा लाइक हॉबीज इन दिस वे आवर अर्ली इंडियंस आल्सो पास्ट देयर लीजरली टाइम प्रोड्यूसिंग एट द सेम टाइम वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स व्हिच आल्सो रिफ्लेक्ट देयर इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज सो दिस इज हाउ Art and architectural objects are also important for understanding early Indian economic history up to 1200 CE. Let us see that part. Art and architecture. Niharanjan Ray, A. K. Kumaraswamy, S. K. Saraswati, and many others inform about temples and their styles. Wise Nagar, Dravid, and Beshar. The images of the gods and goddesses, painting and sculptures. stone metal and terracotta used as the media visual arts produced with regard to the surrounding contexts naturally these art and architectural things reflect the ways of seeing the surrounding conditions students in this connection we should remember the ways of seeing i have put it in quote and quote because this is a partly the name of a book and that's why i have put it in quote so what is the way of seeing whatever we do whatever we write whatever we produce say for example a an image or a sculpture whatever we do we do as we think as we think so we do as we see the surroundings our surroundings so we think in the same way we do so this is how these reflect how we have seen our surroundings in the similar way our early indians also saw their surroundings and the ways how do i know how do we know how they saw their surroundings these are the visual arts art pieces through which we can imagine how they had perceived their surroundings so by now what we have learnt let us go to summary by now it has become clear that these literary and archaeological sources are important enough to provide welcome light to the economic activities of early indians different sources together can help us to explain the economic history of a people of a particular region during a particular period the use of sources depends on what question the historian raises accordingly she or he finds out new sources if necessary or evaluates the known sources in order to find out the answer to his or her question the historian makes sources work for solving the problem she or he deals with so far as much as possible we have tried to cover entire early indian history up to 1200 ce in the light of different sources obviously we have not been able to put all the details if one is interested to know more about these activities economic activities of early indians then please refer to e text thank you all.